Hello viewers, welcome to today's lecture. Please do subscribe to my channel for more content on environmental studies and microbiology. So we have been talking about the different impacts of land degradation, how land is getting degraded and what are the different reasons for that. So we spoke about soil erosion, deforestation, desertification and one such reason for deforestation which is associated with deforestation are the large developmental projects taken up by any country or nation. Two such projects are what we are going to talk about and the first one that is shown over here is the impact of dams. Now we know that dams are structures that are built to control floods. In many cases they are built to get over drought seasons so that the water can be released as per the demand. Not only that, in several places the dams are also associated with generation of hydropower. So it's a very good source of alternative energy. However, despite all of these good things, we also realize that dams have brought about a change in the morphology of the water channel of the river and that has led to many negative impacts downstream. The first major impact is that due to the change in water channel, often there is flooding downstream of that particular dam. So when there is water released, it, the water that the amount of water released, the volume of water released is much beyond the carrying capacity of the stream and that leads to flooding during the rainy seasons. Not only that, it has been realized that dams usually block the sediments. So the dam area will block the sediments and that those sediments which are carried by the river currents are being trapped by the dam. So they are being held in the reservoir region. This region, the reservoir region is now holding all the sediments. Over time, the easily erodible material from the riverbed is carried away. So whatever there is there in the riverbed, rest of the riverbed eventually gets carried away. And now there is no sediment to replace it because all of the sediment has got stuck over here in the reservoir region. So eventually over time, it makes the stream, the downstream region, it makes the stream, uh, you know, it makes it rocky. It makes the stream bed rocky and that creates poorer habitat for the fauna, for the fishes. So all of the sediments are now lying in the reservoir and they are unable to be carried over to the river that, that is there downstream, which is changing the type of fauna that are found over there. The second problem is to build a dam, you have to have deforestation. You have to clear huge tracts of land. You have to cut down huge acres of trees. Only then can we have the dam being built in such a region. And when there is deforestation, there is loss of biodiversity. So there is loss of diversi biodiversity associated with deforestation. Alongside that, we are also fragmenting the river flow. That is, the dams are fragmenting the rivers, which makes it difficult for the migration of fishes or aquatic life. So, so that again affects the biodiversity. Along with that, one major problem that has been seen with respect to dams is the displacement of the indigenous people who are living in that area. In the forest area, usually the dams are built near forest areas because the rivers are present in such areas. And these forest areas see a lot of tribal population, a lot of indigenous people who have to be displaced, who have to be moved for this developmental project. Now, what happens over here is these indigenous people, these tribal people and the ethnic minorities, when they are displaced to a new place, it impacts, it negatively impacts their livelihood, their culture, their traditional knowledge. They are unable to survive in the resettlement camps. The resettlement areas are not equipped with the amenities, the basic amenities. They undergo a lot of trauma, a lot of stress. Economically, they become backward. So resettlement and displacement of tribes and indigenous people is a very big negative impact that is associated with construction of dams or any other big development project. So one of the projects which had gained a lot of mileage in India was the Narmada Valley project. Now, there, have, there are a lot of dams that have been built in India. In fact, Maharashtra has one of the maximum number of dams when we have uh, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. But this project that was part of the Narmada Valley project, under this project, there was a huge dam that is the Sardar Sarovar Dam, as you can see over here. So there were a lot of dams that were planned along the Narmada River. All the way on throughout the, Narm the stretch of the Narmada River, many dams were planned. And Sardar Sarovar Dam was one of the biggest dams that was planned over here. Now, this project started way back in 1985. The foundation stone was laid much before that by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The actual construction started in 1985, but 
it was completed only very recently in 2017. The reason being, this dam gathered or garnered a lot of controversy. It was one of the center of con controversy and protest since it has been since 1980s. And leading this controversy was an environmentalist named Medha Patkar. Not only her, there were other uh, celebrities, there were other environmentalists, other conservationists, other social workers who came forward supporting this protest that is called as the Narmada Bachao Andolan or Narmada Bachao movement. So this was a social movement. It was, it, in, it included tribals, it included farmers, many environmentalists, it included the media personnel. All of them came together mainly to protest against the resettlement of the tribals. So the resettlement of tribals was not looked into properly in the initial draft of the plan. And because of their interference, though the dam was built, but due to the interference of the Narmada Bachao Andolan, they got proper rehabilitation of the displaced people. They were Initially, they were given compensation only for the immediate standing crop. But due to their involvement, these tribals and the indigenous people were given a good compensation. They were given a good displacement, a good rehabilitation. So, this is one of the major projects that is associated with dams in India, which has created a lot of controversy. Many a times, the height of the dam also was reduced. Then it was further increased. All of which because... The people who are being resettled or rehabilitated due to this dam project were not being done in a fair way. So there was a lot of interference by social workers due to which this project finally saw its completion and even the people were compensated in a fair manner. We also have one more project that is associated with the dams that is called as the Save Silent Valley. Now Silent Valley is a region in the state of Kerala, in the southern state of Kerala. So, Silent Valley is this entire region that is present in the Western Ghats. So, as you can see over here, this is the, uh, you know, the Silent Valley region as of today. Now, this region was supposed to have a hydroelectric dam project planned on the Kunti River. This is the Kunti River that flows through this Silent Valley region. So, on this river, a dam was planned way back in 1970s and in 1976 the work on the dam also started. But it gained a lot of recognition, a lot of tempo by not only, it, it was not just a scientific movement that was spearheaded by the Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad, but there were also a lot of authors, media had brought this into the notice of the public. There were a lot of plays written about it, a lot of stories and in different formats, it was brought to the notice of the public that if this dam is built on this river, it is going to have severe ecological and environmental impacts. So, we can say that this was one of the first movements, mass movements in Indian history, which brought not only national attention, but also international attention. Now, the reason for that, the, the, the points that the, these conservationists put forward were very scientific. One of these points was that this is this patch was one of the last few tropical evergreen forest patches in the Western Ghats region. So the Western Ghats are extending right from Maharashtra till the tip of Tamil Nadu. But still, this was one of the last remaining pristine untouched patches. And if we have any such development project over there, it will harm the biodiversity of that particular area. Not only that, it was argued that 40% of Kerala's power generation was being given to Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, the neighboring states. So even if this dam does come into play, it is not going to give much contribution to the state of Kerala. It is in fact, the power is going to be sold to the nearby states. Also, the main, another main reason you can say the mascot of this entire movement came out to be an animal named, a primate named lion-tailed macaw. Now, this lion-tailed macaw is an endangered species and it is endemic to this Western Ghats region. And because this particular region was quite untouched and pristine, a large number of lion-tailed macaws were present over here. So, with pressure from environmentalists and from the international media, a lot of uh, conservationists put in their voice, a lot of authors, media has put in their voice and due to all of these combined efforts, finally, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had to declare this area as a national park and the project was completely called off in 1983. So this is one such successful movement where the 
involvement of the environmentalists and the politicians and the public brought about the safety and it safeguarded a particular biodiversity region. In fact, this region in Kerala when they were uh, in 2017 when the summer was very dry and all the rivers were drying up, this river Kunti did not completely dry and one of the reasons for that is because there was no dam that was obstructing its flow. So it has been a boon for the people of the state because of the Save Silent Valley project which had prevented the construction of a dam in that particular area. So these are two case studies, Save Silent Valley project and the Narmada Valley project which are which show us what the impact of a dam can have on not only the biodiversity and the environment but also on the tribal people who live there. The second major development project that we will be looking at today is the mining project. So impact of mining is also quite detrimental to the environment. Now what you see here is the Bellari mining area. Bellari mining became popular in the mid 2000s when there was an increased demand for the Beijing Olympics. That is when mining for iron ore started becoming popular over there. But that has led to a lot of detrimental effects in that particular region. So the effects of mining are that though it is the society's overall economic growth depends on the supply of mineral products. Mining can have a lot of severe environmental impacts. The first one being mining leads to landslides, frequent landslides and erosion, soil erosion. So what happens is due to the continuous activity, due to the continuous uh, uh, you know, digging of the earth, due to movement of the earth, what happens is that it leads to the loosening up of the earth and that can cause landslides or it can even lead to erosion of that soil due to wind or water. Secondly, it is a major contributor of pollution. So what happens here is not only does it cause air pollution due to all the dust from the blasting or if sufficient safeguards are not taken, it can even release a lot of sulfur dioxide or heavy metals or any other pollutants into the air. Apart from that, it also causes water pollution. Water pollution is due to the drying up of the water sources nearby or the groundwater gets affected due to the mining procedures. So there could be acid drainage or heavy metals could leach into the underground water or the river water nearby. So both surface water and underground water resources are definitely affected due to mining procedures. So that causes the air pollution as well as the water pollution. One example to show you over here is a picture, a comparative picture that you can see here is this is the soil erosion that has been, uh, I mean, this is the soil erosion that has been caused in a mine in South Africa. And what you see over here is the Bhadra River. Now, the Bhadra River was having, near the Bhadra River, there was a Kudremukh Iron Ore Company, which was mining the iron ore from an area in Karnataka called as Kudremukh. It is in the Western Ghats region. Now, in 1969, they were given a 30-year lease, mining lease. But after 1999 also, the mining process continued. The mining procedures continued. Now, you can see very clearly over here, in 2002, as you can see, in 2002, the color of the river is completely different because of the deposits of the iron. So, the uh, river had got contaminated due to the iron deposits and it had impacted the flora and the fauna of the river. After this was brought to the notice, that company was asked to shut down its operations in 2005. And you can see in 2010, five years after the operations were shut down, how the color of the water has changed. So mining definitely affects the, it pollutes the rivers, it pollutes the air and this pollution can cause biodiversity loss. So it can lead to loss of the native flora, it causes loss of the native fauna, they are unable to survive in that particular environment and this has been the case in several mining areas of Jharkhand and Goa as well. Also, mining does have a negative impact on the health and safety of the workers. Now, these workers, especially in underground mines, the workers are often exposed to radiation or they usually suffer from respiratory problems if they have not taken the appropriate measures to you know or have a safety gear there is less visibility in these mines so often accidents take place in fact even in recently in february and may 2022 there was a mine collapse collapse in jharkhand and madhya pradesh so this causes accidental death and that leads to a very big negative impact on the health and safety of the workers who are there or it, you can call it as an occupational hazard. 
So these are the negative impacts of big developmental projects and every time such a project is put into place or is put forward in front of the government, it has to have an environmental impact assessment. That is, we have to see how much impact is going to be there on the environment and is it really economically profitable and only then such projects need to be taken forward. I hope this class was useful for all of you. See you all in the next lecture. Thank you.